Hello and welcome to this session of ACS Science Talks, Connecting the World Through Science. This is the virtual lecture series, Scientific Talks by Specialists on a Specialized Audience, for a Specialized Audience. I'm Kural Gupta. I'm pleased to be your host for today's broadcast of ACS Science Talks. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Ashish Mehto and Dr. Sriranjani Pulakkar, who will be moderating today's live Q&A. Today's session, our speaker for today is uh, Dr. Ju Young Yoon. Dr. Young is a distinguished professor at the Department of Chemistry and Nanoscience at EWHA Women's University. He received his PhD in 1994 from Ohio State University and conducted his postdoctoral work at UCLA and Scripps Research Institute. His research interests include investigations of fluorescent imaging probes, phototherapy, activable photosensitizers, and organic functional materials. He was listed as highly cited researcher in chemistry since 2014 with H index of 122. Additionally, Professor Yoon is on the editorial advisory board of multiple ACS journals, which include ACS Omega, ACS Measure Measurement Science Gold, ACS Sensors, ACS Applied Biomaterials, and ACS Materials, ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces. Professor Yoon has also been a member of ACS for 27 years. So thank you, Professor Yoon, for joining us. The stage is all yours. Uh, okay, thank you. Canal for nice introduction and also organizing this uh, talk. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Chu Yang Yun from uh, Department of Chemistry and Nanoscience, Iwa Women's University. So today uh, I'll talk about um, our recent progress on activatable photosensitizer and fluorescent props. Uh, <clears throat> Firstly, this uh, first part is about fluorescent probes. <clears throat> so, as you know, uh, probably very well. So, uh, it has been a long time uh, the researchers, uh, I mean, focused on this development of uh, fluorescent probes. Um, maybe. Uh, there might be a two distinct uh, approach to design process props. The first approach is based on the molecule recognition or host gas chemistry. So people introduced the uh, known binding affinity or selectivity mm -hmm. uh, to the fluorophore. So we can uh, uh, follow that uh, selective recognition by the fluorescence changes. Uh, then, uh, many researchers realized there are a lot of uh, uh, important biological species, especially, which cannot be recognized by this uh, uh, host gas chemistry or uh, this uh, molecule recognition approach. So, uh, a lot of... Uh, very important organic uh, reactions were adopted to design so-called uh, self-immolative fluorescence props, or uh, we call this uh, approach as a chemodosimeter. So I will talk about uh, two uh, old examples from our group based on the first approach, and then a few other examples based on this self-immolative approach. Uh, back in 2009, uh, we synthesized uh, this uh, imidazolium uh, receptor, which contains uh, these two pi red units. Uh, Zhao Chao Shui actually did the key uh, role in this uh, paper and also in this project. So interestingly, uh, this receptor shows a, a unique uh, monomeric emission uh, only with ATP among various uh, triphosphate nucleotide, including pyrophosphate or phosphate. Also in collaboration with uh, Professor Kwang Su Kim, uh, right now at uh, UNIST, 
And theoretically, uh, Professor Kim uh, suggested that uh, there are two kinds of different binding modes for the ATP and GTP. So ATP in mode and ATP out mode, and also GTP out mode and GTP in mode. So uh, theoretically, uh, this ATP in mode is more stable than ATP out mode. And on the other hand, GTP out mode is more stable than GTP in mode. We also uh, support this uh, binding mode uh, by 2D NMR experiments. So uh, in the case of, for example, GTP, the guanine base is uh, located outside of this bind, uh, binding pocket of the pyren, so uh, via H pi interaction. On the other hand, in the case of ATP, the adenine is located between these two pyren, uh, which can induce uh, the uh, increased uh, the intensity of monomeric emission of this uh, pyrene moiety. So, uh, based on this uh, anionic and also uh, ionic hydrogen bonding interaction between imidazolid moiety and uh, triphosphate, as well as this H pi interactions or pi pi interactions, so uh, we could uh, selectively uh, mean recognize ATP over this uh, similar uh, triphosphate nucleotide. Then the second example for this uh, first approach is about uh, uh, zinc ion. So uh, this uh, naphthalimid unit containing this DA, uh, DPA uh, binding uh, unit is synthesized. And uh, interestingly, uh, we found out uh, this compound can bind cadmium in aqueous uh, solution uh, via amide tautomatic form. On the other hand, uh, zinc ion in aqueous solution can bind via immediate acid tautomatic form. So uh, zinc ion uh, shows about uh, uh, shows a green fluorescence. On the other hand, uh, cadmium induced uh, strong fluorescence of the blue. And we also uh, demonstrated or support this two different binding mode by 2D NMR, and also uh, uh, IR can be the clear cut for this. Uh, carbonyl and uh, this OH mm. uh, stretching uh, band. So uh, also in collaboration with the professor in Zixin at Yonsei University, we could demonstrate this uh, probe can image the zinc ion present in the zebrafish. So we call this as a uh, ligand transformation. So ligand can intelligently can bind uh, cadmium or zinc with the different binding mode. Then uh, the next example is about uh, the chemodosimetric approach or self-immolative approach. Uh, for this one, the first target is uh, hypochlorous acid. Uh, which uh, plays a powerful microvisceral agent in the immune system. And it is generated uh, by MPO from hydrogen peroxide and Cl- uh, in response to inflammatory stimuli. So it is very important to detect HOCl in the presence of hydrogen peroxide or other ROS. So we published uh, mm -hmm, a few papers uh, uh, for this uh, HOCl selective probe. Um, Back in 2013, uh, we synthesized this uh, dual lact system, which contains boronate and thiolactone unit. And among various ROS and RNS, only uh, HOCl can uh, convert this boronate to the pinol and also hydrolyze the thiolactone unit all the way to the fluorescein, resulting in green fluorescence. On the other hand, after two years, we also synthesized this uh, imidazole 2-thion uh, derivative, 
as a two proton uh, rod for the HCL. And also, uh, 2018, uh, will be utilized for the first time this N heterocyclic carbon brain as a selective reacting site for the HOCL over uh, uh, H2O2 or uh, hydroxy uh, ONO minus. So, uh, the resulting uh, imidazoline um, uh, group uh, can cause the, the charge repulsion. So we can uh, simply can observe the, the strong monomeric emission in this case. On the other hand, uh, this prop shows a strong uh, you mean excimer emission in this case. So I will explain uh, more detail about one example, <clears throat> which was commercialized from our group. So uh, this R19S uh, is one of the uh, rhodamine uh, derivative, which contains also thiolactone unit. So this uh, compound can react with the HOCl and uh, inducing the ring opening process of this uh, rhodamine. And so we can see strong fluorescence. And as you see here, uh, the selectivity for the HOCL over other ROS and RNS is uh, quite impressive. And also compared to the uh, DHL or APF, uh, R19S shows a similar selectivity with uh, that of APF. Uh, but in, the, in uh, relatively acidic conditions, uh, like in lysosome, uh, this uh, fluorescence emission is uh, stronger than that of APF in this case. Uh, this is uh, the image of the fly guts. Mm. So uh, bacterial extract was orally introduced. Uh, then uh, we could uh, you mean monitor the generation of HOCL in the fly guts using our prop. Uh, also, this uh, the mouse model system. So uh, we used uh, this uh, uh, GLP tagged uh, bacteria in this case. So green fluorescence comes from GLP. And again, uh, we can see the uh, uh, generation of this R19S uh, using uh, uh, our prop, uh, generation of HOCL by using our prop. And uh, this uh, NOx2 is uh, known as uh, plays a key role in the production of HFCL. So as you see here, uh, when the uh, NOx2 knockdown system, uh, you can see the process. Uh, similarly, uh, in the case of MPO deficient one, again, MPO is the enzyme which uh, generate HOCl from H2O2 and Cl minus. So in this case also, we cannot observe the fluorescence. So uh, we demonstrate this R19S uh, can monitor the uh, you mean generation of uh, HOCl selectively. So uh, it can be used uh, to monitor the infectious disease of the lungs. Uh, then the next target is about enzyme. So uh, the, the enzyme is the main biomarker of most diseases. So it is uh, important uh, to uh, you mean, uh, follow the activity of enzyme. So uh, the first example is about uh, carboxyesterase uh, selective prop. So for this uh, paper, Xiao Peng uh, uh, did a key role. And as you see in this slide, as the group uh, employed as a main uh, recognition uh, site uh, for the CE, but uh, the selectivity between CE and BCH and ACH was potential problem. Um, we found out uh, this uh, uh, commercial inhibitor of uh, BCH and ACHE contains this carbamate unit instead of the ester group. And uh, in addition, this uh, uh, CPT11, which is a precursor of anti cancer drug, 
uh, here also contains a uh, uh, cover mate uh, unit. So uh, catalyzed by CE released anti-cancer drug uh, SN38. So based on this uh, retreat research, uh, we decided to introduce the cover mate moiety instead of the uh, you mean acid group. So he synthesized a series of uh, risoropin derivatives, as you can see in this slide. So among them, um, P3 was the best, so which contains a uh, uh, CL group, and also position of this uh, carbamate unit. So based on this uh, finding, uh, he also synthesized this DCMCLCE, which has the same reaction site, but this moiety is known as AIA unit. So after the hydrolysis by the CE, then uh, DCM weight uh, can show uh, strong AIA fluorescence. So as expected, uh, the selectivity for the CE over BCH and ACH was uh, very nice, and we can see nice fluorescence enhancement. And also compared to uh, FDA-approved ICG, uh, this one shows uh, uh, quite nice photostability in this case. So, uh, in collabor collaboration with the uh, 5BO uh, use lab in Hainan, uh, we applied uh, this probe uh, for the mouse model of the um, anti-cancer drug. So uh, it can uh, follow uh, the effect of this anti-cancer drug for the lung cancer. So you can see here uh, clearly uh, show that the fluorescence decrease in this case. And in addition uh, to that, uh, to improve this uh, CE distribution of the deep uh, hepatomic uh, tissue, uh, 3D fluorescence uh, molecular top uh, tomography imaging technique was applied. So using our probe in this case, using the mouse model. So uh, we observed that carbamid unit shows a high selectivity towards the HCC related uh, biomarker uh, for the evaluation of the treatment successfully. Uh, next example is uh, also about the enzyme, but uh, it's about uh, ALP. So ALP is also recognized as a critical biomarker associated with uh, signal transduction and tumor metabolism. Uh, Hai Dong Li uh, did a key role in this paper. He synthesized this uh, uh, QM derivative. So uh, QM, the QM moiety was used AI core and also it contains hydrophilic phosphate group as an ALP uh, recognition unit. So this uh, probe can show a uh, loosely packed nanoprobe in aqueous solution, which still uh, shows very weak fluorescence. Uh, after uh, hydrolysis by the ALP, then this uh, activation by the probe by ALP induced in situ aggregation of this uh, DQMOH, so we could see interesting a uh, strong AIE fluorescence. Uh, the size of this uh, probe, uh, aggregated probe is shown in this uh, picture. And also you can see the uh, selectivity uh, for the uh, ALP over other uh, enzymes and other species. Then, uh, then this uh, slide explains uh, the, uh, the fluorescence image of uh, endogenous ALP activity in the nude mouse uh, bearing xenograft mouse tumors. 
So uh, you can clearly see the difference between the uh, hep tumor and normal liver, and as well as hella tumor um, over, uh, you mean, uh, uh, normal liver. So uh, during the uh, surgery, uh, the solution can be sprayed, as you can see here, and uh, the tumor site could be successfully uh, removed. So uh, this DQMALP could be used as a successful imaging guided uh, uh, surgery, as you see in this slide. Then uh, the second part of uh, my talk is uh, about uh, photodynamic therapy and also photothermal therapy too. So, uh, as you can see in this energy diagram, uh, vibrational radiation can cause, uh, you mean, uh, increase of the temperature. So we can uh, do the photothermal therapy and also photoacoustic imaging is also possible. After intersystem crossing to the triplet state, then usually that uh, photosensitizers generate, convert the molecular oxygen to the singular oxygen, so-called type two process. Also, uh, these photosensitizers can generate radical species uh, such as superoxide radical anion or hydroxyl radical or hydrogen peroxide. We call this process as a type one process. Uh, type one process uh, is considered as a better approach for, to treat the tumor because the tumor is uh, normally hypoxic conditions. So uh, this type one process is less dependent on the concentration of oxygen, as you know. Uh, the first example for this topic is about uh, so-called one for all nanomaterial system. So Xingxu Li, uh, right now in Fuji University, uh, he actually did a uh, key role in this project. So. He synthesized this uh, ptalocyanin derivative, which contains biotin at the end. Uh, this uh, single compound can be self-assembled and makes a nanoparticle, and in which fluorescence and ROS generation is off. Uh, when it meets specific proteins such as avidin, uh, it can uh, be partially deassembled and we could observe the fluorescence and ROS generation is on. Uh, still, uh, the, we could observe moderate temperature enhancement. So we could observe the photothermal effect in this case, and also uh, photoacoustic imaging was possible too. So we call this as a one for all system. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this uh, uh, compound shows a selectivity for the epidin and also the uh, fluorescence intensity, uh, fluorescence uh, ROS generation is uh, almost completely quenched. So uh, addition of epidin can uh, you mean activate uh, the generation of ROS. And this is a TM image of nanoparticle. So uh, you can clearly see when evidence was added, uh, this partially deassembled nanostructure. And this uh, self-assembled system can be delivered to the tumor, uh, mainly EPL effect, as you can see in this uh, slide. Uh, in addition, this uh, A549 is known as a biotin receptor positive cancer cell. On the other hand, uh, this cell is known as a biotin receptor uh, negative cell. So again, you can see the, clearly the difference between the biotin receptor positive cancer cell and biotin receptor negative cancer cell. Uh, this is uh, another example uh, of the ptalocyanin. So, uh, we synthesize this uh, monosaponated derivative. 
Uh, in this case, this can uh, make a, a smaller nanoparticle with a hole inside. Interestingly, this one can be deassembled in situ uh, in the presence of albumin and can make an albumin complex. And this complex can be delivered to the tumor. And we can do the PDT uh, using this albumin complex. So uh, as I mentioned, the size of this nanoparticle was about 15 nanometer. And uh, even in PBS, uh, it can, uh, uh, the nanoparticle can be formed and the stability was uh, uh, quite nice. So uh, we could uh, uh, keep this nanoparticle about a, a week or so in solution uh, without the light. And uh, then again, the fluorescence uh, intensity was completely off in this case. And also compared to the uh, indocyanin green or uh, octasulfonated uh, derivative, uh, this nano PCS shows a nice photostability. Uh, interestingly, this uh, when uh, BSA was added, we could see the uh, uh, dramatic enhancement of the fluorescence. And also the ROS generation is, uh, is on. And interestingly, when BSA was added, uh, the size of this nanoparticle uh, reduced almost approximately to six nanometer, which corresponds to the size of albumin. So in collaboration with the uh, uh, Professor San Choi at Iwa, uh, we could uh, uh, suggest the binding mode of this uh, thalassidin derivative with the BSA. So in the binding mode, the heme site uh, shows that the lowest conformation and this uh, thalassidin and zinc ring nicely fits into the pocket with uh, zinc ion also coordinating with oxygen with the Y161 residue, and also serponate group forms ionic interaction with the K519. Then, uh, then we thought how to actually prove or support our assumption uh, of the complexation of this uh, albumin and all the way to the tumor. So in collaboration with the Professor Gitek Nam at Yonsei Medical School, uh, prepared that uh, this genetically engineering engineered mice, so which can uh, uh, generate this YFP labeled album. So uh, this YFP labeled album it can make a complex with the ptalocyanin, and we could observe this uh, fluorescence of the ptalocyanin as well as YFP at the tumor site. So this is the uh, data explained here. So uh, we could actually demonstrate it, this in situ trapping of our uh, thalocyanin uh, compound with the albumin, yeah. and which can be a, a delivered to the tumor. And we, we could do the P PDT using the uh, genograft uh, tumor uh, mice model. And then uh, this slide explains about the uh, heavy atom free photosensitizers. Uh, common molecular design strategy for effective photosensitizer is incorporate heavy atom uh, into the photosensitizers to enhance the intersystem crossing. However, it can cause the dark toxicity and short uh, triple state lifetime and potentially high cost of heavy atom metals. So uh, many groups, uh, including uh, our group, uh, uh, reported about uh, heavy atom free photosensitizers in the uh, last 10 years or so. So among uh, various approaches, uh, this uh, thionation of carbonic group in conventional fluorophore can be one, one of the approach to design this uh, heavy atom free photosensitizer. Uh, thiobase have received uh, much attention as a cancer, anti-cancer drug, and also uh, being developed with a clinical application uh, due to their except, uh, excellent photo and chemotherapeutic property. 
However, the drawback of this iobase uh, requires such as a high concentration or prolonged irradiation time or UVA light source uh, can be limited, uh, have limited their future uh, for their application. Upon replacement of oxygen uh, with the sulfur in carbonyl group, uh, uh, can uh, in this case, the sulfur atom may can be uh, considered as a heavy atom due to stronger spin orbital coupling effect than that of oxygen. So uh, for this approach, uh, Dr. Hia and uh, Suji uh, work together to synthesize this uh, naphthalene derivative, uh, which contains strong electron donating group. And in this case, oxygen was replaced by the sulfur. So just uh, replacing of this uh, oxygen with the sulfur atoms uh, read dramatic changes in photophysical properties. Uh, also, this ROS generation ability of this uh, many S was suppressed under physiological conditions due to self-assembly, which was uh, significantly recovered in cancer cell was second advantage of this system. Uh, after uh, introduce, introduction of the strong electron donating group, as expected, it can push the emission uh, uh, to the longer wavelengths. And interestingly, when uh, sulfur was substituted uh, with the oxygen, uh, for instance, is almost completely quenched, as you can see in this uh, picture. So this uh, facilitated, uh, you mean, uh, intersystem crossing from excited singular state to the reactive triple state, reading nearly unity singular oxygen quantum yield in organic solvent. So spin orbital coupling constant significantly increased and triplet, singular triplet energy gap was decreased uh, upon replacing oxygen with the sulfur. Uh, as I mentioned, that the suppression of the RS generation of this many S uh, in physiological conditions uh, could be, uh, was recovered uh, in the cancer cells. And also, a uh, third advantage of the system can be many S can still produce considerable amount of RS even in the severe hypoxic conditions. So uh, uh, mainly by type one uh, process. So you can see here, uh, even in hypoxic conditions, uh, this uh, cancer cell, uh, you mean uh, toxicity for the cancer cell is uh, quite nice. So uh, this uh, can be one of the approaches that uh, uh, people can uh, design uh, heavy atom free photosensitizers. Uh, Right now, we are uh, uh, roading this uh, many S to the exosome and uh, doing the mouse uh, experiment is undergoing. Uh, for the PDT, uh, target could be the cancer or tumor, but it can be also uh, uh, bacteria. So uh, for this one, uh, uh, we recently published a few papers about this topic, and I will show uh, one of uh, them. It is well known the membrane of gram-negative bacteria is more complicated than that of positive bacteria. If the photosensitizer generates single oxygen, it can uh, basically kill bacteria, uh, whether uh, uh, it is they are, uh, you mean, inner or outside of the uh, the membrane uh, you, uh, due to the high reactivity of single oxygen. On the other hand, superoxide radical anion uh, with the moderate reactivity has a difficulty directly, uh, you mean, uh, destroying bacteria out of membrane because the process of the superoxide radical anion conversion to the most highly toxic species hydroxyl radical occurs inside of the bacteria. So taken together, RS different in reactivity uh, inspired us that the superoxide radical uh, 
generated photosensitizers may be antibacterial agent, selectively kill gram positive bacteria. So Xiao Pang uh, synthesized uh, these two compounds, uh, NBSN and NBSCN. So this compound also contains uh, uh, ammonium, uh, alkyl ammonium site, uh, which can find the surface of the membrane. And the uh, NBSN mainly produces superoxide radical. Uh, so it shows a high selectivity towards gram positive bacteria. On the other hand, MBSN has a high concentration of single oxygen, so it shows no selectivity towards bacteria. So, as I mentioned, uh, this MBSN uh, shows the selectivity for the SRN use. On the other end, MBSN uh, was uh, effective both uh, as Arrhenius and E. coli. And also, uh, uh, in vivo antibacterial evaluation of MBSN was uh, uh, you know, uh, tried uh, on the S. Arrhenius infected wounds on mice, as you can see here. So, uh, MBSN was uh, solution was treated, then uh, LED light irradiation. So we could observe that uh, uh, curing of this uh, SRNUs infected wounds on the mice here. Okay, so uh, I think that's the that was the example of the uh, fluorescence probes and photosensitizers uh, from our book. So uh, um, I deeply thanks to the uh, students and uh, postdocs from our group uh, last uh, almost 20 years or so. And also all the uh, uh, close, uh, you mean collaborators uh, in all over the world. And uh, this is a uh, front gate of Iwa Ormond University. So uh, I hope you can visit sometime. Uh, when you visit, so please uh, come and visit our campus. It's uh, quite beautiful. Okay, thank you so much for your kind uh, attention. Thank you. <laughs>